the previous capsule, I mentioned how insulin resistant can make it a lot harder to get lean. When you are insulin resistant, when you eat, your insulin is higher and it stays up longer, putting you in storage mode, which makes it a lot harder to mobilize the fat you have. You can still do it, but you're a lot less efficient at doing it. So the more sensitive you are, normally the easier it is to get leaner and the easier it's also to build muscle because the nutrients will be shuttled to those muscles better. Now, what is the connection between cortisol and insulin resistance? Because there's a cortisol, chronic cortisol elevation. When cortisol is always high, it is one of the things that make you insulin resistant the most. One of the things that had the greatest impact on increasing insulin resistance is chronically elevated cortisol levels. Now you have to understand what are the roles of cortisol. Cortisol has three main functions in the body. The first function is that it will increase blood sugar level when it goes down too low. So when blood sugar level goes down lower than the optimal or normal level, your body will seek to increase blood sugar level in the normal range. So it can either use glucagon, cortisol, or growth hormone to do the job, normally a combination of three. So cortisol will be released when you need to increase blood sugar level, when you are deprived of glucose. It will also be released when you are active and you need to mobilize energy to fuel your activity. And the third role of cortisol is it inhibits the immune system so you can have more resources to spend on actually fighting a stress and then you will simply bring your, your immune system back afterwards to be able to repair the damage. So, so these are the three main roles of, of cortisol. Now, how are they impacting insulin? Well, you have to understand this. When cortisol spikes, blood glucose will increase. Or more importantly, muscle glycogen will be broken down so that you can increase blood sugar level. And that cord every time cortisol will spike, you will mobilize glucose. That happens every time cortisol goes up. Now, when we were fighting tigers, when I was a caveman, well, the, oh, I'm, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not an historian, but I'm pretty sure that cavemen did not have any job-related stress. I'm convinced that they didn't have any financial troubles. I'm also pretty darn sure that they didn't have relationship issues or they kid, their kids didn't have any school problems. So the only real time they had that cortisol spike was when they were fighting a tiger or when they were running away from a tiger or they were not able to kill a tiger. So when I'm fighting or running away, I need to mobilize the energy to have fuel. And when I, I can't kill a tiger, I'm starving, so I mobilize energy to be able to fuel my, my, my walk and my daily activities. Now, nowadays, cortisol is released in non-physical activity situation. Bob works at a desk as an accountant. Bob's boss walks in the office and opens a can of whip-ass on Bob because Bob is late with his work. Bob's cortisol spikes because of the stress created by the boss. Now that cortisol spike will come with a mobilization of glucose. You don't have a choice. Every time cortisol spikes, blood glucose will go up. Now, if I'm fighting a tiger, that's fine because I'm going to use that glucose to fuel my fighting. If I'm starving and I'm mobilizing glucose, that's fine because I'm using that glucose to fuel my daily activities. But if Bob is seated at a desk, he's not physically active, he's not going to use all that glycogen. Now, what happened is his blood glucose will go up maybe outside of the normal range. Now Bob's body panics. High blood sugar, you need to bring it back down. What happens, what hormone does that? It's insulin. 
So insulin is released to bring blood sugar back down. Now, if Bob is constantly under stress, while well, he constantly produces cortisol, which constantly produces glucose, and that always requires the release of insulin to bring it back down. That's why chronically elevated cortisol level can actually make you insulin resistant because you constantly have to pump out insulin to bring sure blood sugar level to back, back down to normal levels. So people who are under a lot of stress are a lot more likely to suffer from insulin resistance because of the high cortisol level that always increase blood sugar level, needing the release of insulin.